Hello, and welcome to another in a series of podcasts with the SANS Institute and ARC Advisory Group. This latest offering will discuss cybersecurity and the cost of downtime. My name is Greg Hale, and I'm the editor and founder of Industrial Safety and Security Source, or ISSSource.com, and I'm here today with Doug Wiley, director at SANS Institute, and security expert Eric Cosman from the ARC Advisory Group. I've long said if, a, if an end user is on their security game, they are helping eliminate unplanned downtime and keeping the system up and running and increasing productivity. So security is more than just an insurance policy, it's a business enabler. Along those lines, Eric, I know most users uh, understand the cost of downtime, but do they understand the effect, be it cost or damage, a cyber incident may have on production? Yeah, thanks, Greg. That's an excellent question. I, I I think the answer to that is the the awareness is increasing, and the the connection that has to be made is while asset owners have long uh, been very aware of consequences, potentially dangerous and even disastrous consequences that they want to completely avoid. Um, what the connection that has to be made and is being made now is the fact that those consequences can be precipitated by means other than those that they might have previously anticipated. So where they might have in the past focused on physical equipment failure uh, and things of that nature, now we're educating them and they are becoming aware of the fact that cyber incidents, be they deliberate attacks or inadvertent cyber incidents, can cause the same sorts of consequence. And that's a positive development. Okay, thanks, Eric. Now, Doug, if, if users come to grips with understanding downtime costs as they relate to cyber, does that lead them to a discussion about a security return on investment? Yeah, thanks, Greg. Um, that another outstanding question that you've asked here, and and what I'll say is that security investments are are very good business, and and frankly, just recognizing the consequences as we work to counteract risks, it becomes it becomes a great feeder into a return on investment discussion that we need to have with our company management. Uh, when we think about the OT environment. Uh, we, we can think about business operational technology imperatives like safety, resiliency, availability, um, and, and all that leading to, to the productivity aspects. And, and making investments in security is really aiding us in risk avoidance. It helps us to accelerate our ability you know, to, uh, to make sure that we're addressing risk, that we can respond and recover, and really, really help companies get back to their business imperatives. We, we can't forget also that, that it is a people problem first. And when we're choosing our investments and making our investments, the first dollars that, that we should be making should be oriented towards people to make solid decisions so we can be, be working to address uh, downtime and make sure that we're getting returns on investment from those. Okay, thanks, Doug. And now, now, so Eric, the users are seeing the endpoint of a security issue, which is the loss of productivity. And that could lead to a discussion about what kind of ROI they could get. Uh, but just where should a user start looking to implement or even beef up their security? Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Greg. I, I, I guess I, the place I always start when people ask that question is for the asset owner, and, and I was an asset owner for many, many years or worked for an asset owner, the first thing that they have to do is understand what it is they're trying to secure. And as I work with asset owners now um, through ARC or in other venues, it's very common to see that they don't have an accurate um, description or inventory or, or whatever term you would like to use about exactly what they have in their facilities. They might have installed over a period of years or decades. People that installed it might no longer be around. So it's very important. The first step, and even though this, you know, it's a tedious step, is to understand exactly what it is you're trying to secure and enumerate all of the assets that you have. There's a tendency sometimes, and, and I, I, uh, Doug made a very good point about people and process in addition to technology. There's a tendency sometimes, I think, for people to look for the proverbial silver bullet. You know, just tell me what do I have to implement to make my, what tool do I have to implement to make my facility secure or more secure? And unfortunately, it's not that simple. Um, 
if you go to technology first, you're probably going to spend money that you don't need to spend and you're going to get less than a desirable result. So you have to focus on, as I said, the assets, the processes you use and the people. And then once you have all of that sort of basic foundation in place, then and only then should you start to look for specific uh, tools and technologies to make your situation better. Okay, thanks, Eric. And, and Doug, understanding what assets a user has is key and a good first step. But, you know, as security is such a dynamic environment, I mean, how can a user ensure they are reaching various security levels? Yeah, certainly. And and OT companies, those that, you know, make move and power our planet here, they're, they're very accustomed to continuous improvement models in their process, you know, striving for enhanced efficiency and productivity. So so these imperatives are are really helpful when it comes time to begin to evaluate uh, the potential impacts that that uh, uh, that security risks and, and ultimately threats can have on systems. So in in order for progress to be made, establishing a baseline of where an organization is is essential. And and it's not just looking at the uh, technical assessment of the perimeter of a control system or looking at an individual component within that system. It's really considering all facets of risk that can affect the operation and and um, and and the main objective of an industrial control system. So it is multifaceted, and uh, you know just just uh, piling on to what Eric said, the the people uh, element here is an imperative. So we we have to make sure that we have that broad perspective. We also have to accept the fact that there will be setbacks, and. Uh, from that and continuous improvement models, we can actually learn from those types of issues and make sure that we're not going to repeat past mistakes and we're going to ultimately improve our posture uh, for the future to avoid uh, similar situations uh, as they arise. So, so these are all important elements and that continuous improvement model that is, it is so core uh, today in industrial Industrial control is highly applicable in managing risk, uh, security risk to organizations. Uh, Greg, this All is right, Eric. Right. If I could, if I could make a comment on that, uh, just maybe inter inter interject a comment here. Methodology sure. was a term that was used, and I think it's you know people who are listening to this podcast are probably familiar with simple methodologies like plan, do, check, act, or if you're a if you've come into contact with like Six Sigma as a methodology or the Six Sigma family of methodologies, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And by rep repeatedly or repetitively implementing those methodologies, you define what you have, you measure your performance, you analyze what has to be done, you make improvements, you put in place a control plan, which gives you a new base of operations, a new level of performance, and then you basically do it all over again. And this just emphasizes the point that we need to make to people that security is not a project, it's a process. And so by you know, implementing that improvement cycle again and again, you move up the ladder of security performance. Well, I will say changing that project mentality is, is something that uh, has to repeatedly occur throughout the industry. And, uh, and that's, that's an incredibly good point that, uh, that, it, that it is an ongoing process. Um, so I just want to say hey, thanks, Doug, and thanks, Eric, for uh, joining us today. And to expand on the security message, don't forget the 22nd annual ARC Advisory Group Conference, February 12th through the 15th in Orlando, Florida, and the 13th annual SANS ICS Summit, also in Orlando, March 19th through the 20th. So for the SANS Institute and the ARC Advisory Group, this is Greg Hale saying thanks for listening.